Hello, my name is Rachel and I'm spooked. Oh my goodness, guys. So uh, as, as um, you know, many of you know, I recently moved in with my boyfriend, Bryant, uh, and he had mentioned in passing before in the past that he had received a letter from the son of the previous owner of this house telling him the house was haunted. And I didn't really think much of it, just thought it was a cute little anecdote. Well, he gave me the letter to read. And oh my goodness, I want to share this letter with you guys. This is, this is wild. It, this reads like a sequel to the Amityville Horror. <laughs> it is crazy. And, it, and the guy, the gentleman in question, which I'm not obviously not going to share names, <laughs> but he actually sent it from prison. <laughs> he sent this letter from prison to ask the new owners, because he, he just addresses it to the family at and then the address. So he has no idea who's moved in here. He uh, just assumes it's a family. <laughs> and and he, he so he just sends this letter to be like, have you had these same experiences? And and it's it's a long letter. Like, ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> it, and he wrote, uh, he wrote this in November of 2019. Bryant moved in, I believe in 2016, I believe is when Bryant bought, bought this house. And uh, he received this letter in 2019. And th this house and the garage that I'm currently in, it's a de detached garage behind the house, uh, were built by the original owners. So there's only been one previous family who's lived here. And, <laughs> and this is the son from that family who is roughly my age, because I believe somewhere in here he says um, when he was, they, they like, built this and moved in when he was 14, I think, or maybe a little younger, but the year that he put would have been corresponding to the year I would have been that age. So he's roughly my age. I'm, I'm 51. So he's somewhere in that age now. Uh, but like I said, he sent this in 2019. So just a few years back. And I just want to show you like it's front and back and it's like seven pages long front and back. <laughs> so this is gonna be a long one. This is gonna be a long one, guys. I'm gonna read you this letter, and I'm also going to try to uh, take pictures of the places that I think he's talking about and put them up on the screen as we go through it, so you can have a visual of the areas he's talking about in this letter. And I also want to point out the first. I've only read this letter one time before, and it was close to bedtime, so I had just taken an edible. So it's possible <laughs> that that it's. You know, may, maybe it's not as weird as I thought because I might have been a little little high at the time the first time I read it. But we're going to find out because this is the second time I'm reading this letter. And <laughs> here we go. Let me just jump into this because this, this is a wild ride, guys. This is wild. And then we'll discuss it at the end. <laughs> okay, so at the very top, he puts this little note. I hope you read this whole letter with an open mind. And all is true. And I hope I don't make you upset with me for writing. It's not my intentions for sure. So, to whom it may concern, because again, he has no idea who's moved in. He just assumes it's a family. To whom it may concern. I know you don't know me, but I used to live in the house you are living in now. This may be awkward to hear from someone like this, but it is something that has aided me for years. And I lived in that house since I was 14 years old. Oops. So guys, I've had a power outage. I will pick this up when the power comes back on. I'm leaving this in because that's spooky. I just start reading this letter and the power went out. <laughs> I'll, see, I'll, I'll be back here, hopefully, whenever the power comes back. Okay, guys, I'm back. The power wasn't out for very long. I, I took that time to run to the post office, which is only like five minutes away. By the time I got back, power was back on. So it was a, it was a short power outage. It's storming today. So it's it's like, it's not like it came out of nowhere. It's been raining all day long. And if I look a little more like limp, my hair looks a little more limp than, than it did a few minutes when you were just watching a few minutes ago. Uh, it's because I got rained on when I ran to the post office. Okay, so let's get back to this letter because we only got like three sentences in. We didn't get very far. All right, let's see here. Where did I leave off? I believe I left off with him being 14 years old. Yes. <clears throat> here we go. I was 14 years old and a lot of good times and a lot of bad times in that house. I could go on for hours. Well, my name is 
we're just gonna call him John. That's not his real name, but I don't want to use real names. <laughs> I, I realize his real name is also a very common real name, but for some reason I just don't feel right using real names. So we're just gonna call him John. <sighs> but anyway, well, my name is John and what I'm writing to you is about that house and I don't want to scare you. Okay, and I want to, uh, he put a, in a like a little tiny note up above his name that says, I'm 45 now, 46 this Thursday. And um, see, this was in 2019, so that's what, five years ago. So he's roughly, like I said, roughly my age, 50, 51 years old. So I, I, I estimated that right. Okay, where are we? I don't want to scare you, but I need to know if it's just me and some in my family who have witnessed and felt some strange things about that house and also the back of the house, mainly in the very back. Also inside the house, I wanted to stop a few times and ask about it, but I didn't really have time to because apparently he occasionally drives by <laughs> when, when he's not in jail. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sorry, I'm going to probably do a few interjections here and there as we go along. Uh, <clears throat> well, I've been in and out of prison for some time. <sighs> Try that again. I've been in and out of prison for some time now, and it's because of my drug addiction, and it's caused me a lot of hard times. But I do hope you do not get mad at me for writing you this letter. But I am curious is to see if you or anyone in your family have witnessed strange things going on in the house, around the house, or the back side and on the side of the house. Felt the hair stand up on the back of your neck as you walked from the backyard to the front yard and feel as if something is going to run up behind you and grab you or just a weird feeling sometimes something is watching you from the back fence or ditch line. Now, I used to go out camping, fishing, hunting and all of that in the woods that nighttime don't scare me. I've been in the woods where you can't see your hand in front of your face and I've put pep in my step coming up to the front of that house, alongside that house, coming through the gate. The gate is no longer there. We, we had that removed um, shortly, I think, yeah, sure. When we had the, uh, the house uh, or the garage renovated, I had my handyman also remove the gate because there was no point because there was no actual fence around the property anymore. It was just this one spot had a pointless gate. <laughs> anyway, have you or any of your family ever felt that or when you're coming down the steps of the deck, you feel like something is watching you from the ditch line at the back fence. Well, me and my niece, her boyfriend and my sister and brother and a couple of his kids all felt that feeling and wonder if you have too. I also have when I first moved into that house from Western Branch, I guess Chesapeake. I told my mom as soon as I drove into that driveway, I felt something weird about that house and I didn't want to live and I didn't want to live there. Well, I moved in there in 1988. I want to say, and, and I think you were the buyer of the house when my mom sold it. No matter, my mom really didn't believe in the ghost stuff, and he spelled ghost, G-O-A-S-T, like toast, but with a G. Or, well, she never did witness any of that stuff. I'm about to also tell you about, and the reason I am, is because you may have witnessed things. As you can tell, his grammar is also not the best. So I'm doing my best to get the words in the right order. <laughs> or if things happened, you've put off as nothing or a dream or what you have. And if you have little ones and they are telling you something is wrong, don't put it off. Now, my bedroom was the one at the end of the hallway to the left. Me and my brother for years. I think what he is saying there is him and his brother were in that bedroom for years. <clears throat> At first, for years, until I got a lot older, I just put it off as bad dreams. And as kids, you see things in the dark that grown-ups think are just what kids imagine. But I don't. But I don't. The bedroom I stayed in, I could never get a full night's sleep in. I'd always wake up or felt as if I'd gotten woken up during the night and would see shadows and things in the room, but never really put it together or just blew it off for years. But a lot of unexplained things really did happen to me and to that house. I always had bad dreams or to me, so I thought, but now I believe different. But the dreams always consisted of things on fire, like the whole house or or it was as if I was being told if I didn't do a certain task 
for this person or being, my whole house would explode or catch on fire and my whole family would suffer and I'd wake up crying or I would be screaming. That, <laughs> another interjection, that sentence makes me feel like Maybe he was being abused in some way and his mind came up with this, you know, paranormal explanation for what happened to him because he doesn't want to face the abuse he actually dealt with. Because, you know, being told that he has to do what these voices or this person, this ghostly presence says, or they're going to hurt his family or destroy his house, that, that sounds like something an abuser would threaten a child with. So it's kind of... <sighs> That makes me, makes me feel really bad for this person. Okay, let's keep going though. I'd wake up crying and I would be screaming. I once made the whole family get out of that house. The dream felt so real and I was so upset. Everyone went outside until I calmed down and they said it was a dream. Maybe it was a warning of future events. I don't know. All I do know is the back room on the left was the room. As soon as my sister and her husband moved out years later, I moved out of that room and the dreams got less horrible and I could sleep better and wouldn't wake up all the time in the middle of the night this i will tell you my garage has burnt to the ground there was a different garage i'm in the garage right now that we had renovated there was a different garage here apparently when they first had the house built and that garage burnt to the ground but there, and there's more to that story too let me get to that my garage has burnt to the ground and we built this one then the left side we built bigger so we could work on boats, motors, car motors, cycles, paint them, and all of that. So any... Way we had the hot water heater... Ex Am I on the right page? <laughs> so anyway, we had the hot water heater explode before. Two fires in the dryer room one from the lynch trap so they say and one electrical with the dryer so they say two of my good friends i thought died in the garage fire they were in there but got out i went in the house to play atari candles were the fire starter so they say but we had the candles so it wouldn't catch anything on fire but somehow it did so this also says to me like him and some of his friends were playing in the original garage and they were using candles and he says they had the candles in a way that they wouldn't set fire to anything but i i think you know we all know you can't trust a candle even if it's on something that's not going to catch fire somehow it can still start a fire it's just a dangerous thing and and also he thought his friends had died in that fire but they did get out <laughs> but that's just and i think he has some guilt there because like he says i went into the house to play to play um on the atari so he like he left his friends out with the candles so I think he felt some guilt there. Well, that may explain some of those earlier dreams. I don't know, but I do know I always had a bad feeling at night when I would be alone coming off that deck to the garage or coming out of it to go back into the house or going to the front of the house. I feel someone died back there a long time ago because all of that used to be woods and swamp area and train tracks used to run through the neighborhood. As you know, and from a friend of mine who was a lot older, showed me pictures of where the house is now. And all of it used to be woods and marshland. Well, he also told me drifters and crap used to hop the train and get off the train right in those woods. It's really not woods now. It's Now it's just a very narrow strip of woods. But like, and there's a, like a little creek that runs through it. I'm going to try and show you pictures at the backyard. Like there's a fence line. There's this narrow strip of woods with a little creek running through it. And then directly on the other side of that creek are more houses. So apparently it's all been developed. But it, I, I'm guessing maybe when he was living here back in the 80s, the woods went back further and they hadn't done that developing on that uh, back part yet. Because right now it's only like maybe 10 to 20 feet wide. It's not really woods anymore <laughs> let's let's see here where were we let's see here yep the train and apparently there used to be a train back in those woods but that's i don't even know if there's any remnants of those tracks left anymore uh but anyway so i don't know if that is true or not but it explains certain things to me now this was told to me after some of these things happened we also had two fires in the kitchen 
they had a lot of fires in this house. They had two in the laundry room, two in the kitchen. The garage burnt down. <laughs> we all, let's see here. The uh, stove electric clock or well chipboard caught on fire. That's, that's wild. And fire burnt the cabinets up above it. And the ceiling had real bad smoke damage. We put it out. The other fire well was not good at all. My mom's hands and skin was literally hanging off her hands. We both were putting out a grease fire. My friend was drunk and put on French fries, but started the grease and fell back asleep. And we woke up and my mom woke up screaming. The whole kitchen was on fire above the stove along the whole back wall. My mom grabbed the pot with the grease on fire now and took it to the back door. Now, I had come in that back door, so nothing was there when I came in, but my mom took the pot to go out that door. It used to be a screen door. Now there's just a regular door there. Um, there's no longer a storm or screen door, but I think when they were here, because that's the laundry room, and then the back door, I think they just had a screen door there, and um, then and then uh, the door to the house, and I think that's why there's a, a um, like a lock, like a little slide lock on the door to the house, because they only had a screen door on the laundry room at one time. But anyway, <laughs> I'll try to get pictures of all this so you, so you can understand what I'm talking about here. But any, so, so yeah, so she had this, this pot of hot grease on fire and she was going to throw it out the back screen door and they had plexiglass in it. And then the door swung open and a screwdriver got stuck in the boards and flung the door back at my mom and hit the pot and all the grease and fire went over my mom so what i think he's saying is happening is they had that like uh screen door with plexiglass in it and she like pushed the door open really hard and there was a screwdriver on the porch that had hit that screwdriver and bounced back on her and then splashed the hot grease all over her which is just terrible and the skin on her hands were hanging off and she came back in and when I heard her scream, I looked back and she was basically putting herself out. And then she ran back to the kitchen, throwing flour and yelling at me, no water. At least she knew not to throw water on a grease fire. And also if you have a pan, a grease fire pan that's on fire, the best thing you can do is throw a lid on it because you need to starve it of oxygen. Don't throw water on it <laughs> and don't pick it up and try and throw it out the back door apparently. If you have a lid throw a lid on it that's that's the best way to handle a grease fire or if you have a better idea or you know a better way to take care of a grease fire if you don't have a fire extinguisher nearby let me know <laughs> but anyway where were we okay so she was yelling no water but had enough flour uh and the water would make it cake up and not spread which it did so apparently they still threw water on the on the flour and then because it was a thick paste it didn't cause it to spread. I don't know if there's any validity to that. Let me know what you think. But anyway, which it did and got the fire out with bowls of water and the sprayer. Crazy story, huh? Well, I always thought something was messed up about that house, always. So altogether, we've had had four inside house fires, one outside and three floods inside. One water heater, one water bed blew up, and destroyed our whole house and a so-called friend stuck a water hose in our kitchen window <laughs> so i don't think any of the floods are really supernatural they just had a, a uh, water heater which those you know if you don't take good care of them they can die and flood your house <laughs> it's always been kind of a, a small fear of mine uh, and then a water bed that blew up that's i'm not sure what you would have to do to make a water bed pop but that's also a thing <laughs> And that's also very 80s that they had a waterbed. <laughs> and let's see here. Oh yeah, and then the friend sticking the hose in the kitchen window is just a was just a jerk. <laughs> what the hell? Anyway, moving on. <laughs> Something that really will flip you out, I'll tell you at the end of this letter. Well, I had gotten locked up for years and came home, then got locked up again for four years after that. Four year bit after that four year bit, I had been following the Lord. I am to this day a Christian. I've just felt short of my addiction and allowed it to overcome me again. But anyway, after my four years, I had been doing RBC Ministries Bible. I've been doing uh, RBC Ministries Bible course and was actually invited to come and study at RBC Ministry College. But I did not take up the offer 
wish I would have for a lot of reasons. But when I came home, this is when I really realized all the stuff that had taken place at the house, maybe more than just bad circumstances and such. Well, I had my niece and her boyfriend live there. This uh, in when me and my niece were talking about all the stuff that's happened over the years. And I was telling her about the weird feelings you get in the back and on the side of the house. And she was surprised anyone else felt that or knew about it. Then her husband, Ben, came in and asked about what we were talking about. And he, too, was like, wow. And they both claimed at night they don't like going out back to that garage or up beside the house to or from that backyard. When I mentioned the back ditch line, they both really, they both really, all of us got goose pimples and the hair standing up on our arms talking about it. Ha ha ha. <laughs> well, I was home about three days when I had said something about it. When at that time I had a five-year-old daughter and I had fixed that back bedroom up real nice for her, painted it all pink, new curtains, everything. You can think of, sorry, tripping on the words, <laughs> painted it all pink, new curtains and everything you can think of. I had it decked out and it took me like five days to do it all. Anyway, she slept in that room like twice after the second time she wouldn't. And every time I had her over after that, she wouldn't go in that room. I'd put her favorite cartoon on. I'd get her a oldies cartoon, she called it, the donkey donkey movie it was. A fly that wouldn't leave the donkey alone? I have no idea what he's talking about there. Uh, some cartoon, I guess. Well, she would come out after I turned the lights off and after like 30 minutes or so, she would be crying that she wanted to go home. When I asked her why, she would just say she wants her mommy. Well, a few weeks went by and then about a month, same thing. She didn't want to stay in that room during the day. She would go in, but at night, she would not stay in there longer than 20 or 30 minutes. So after a month goes by, I was cleaning. There was a mirror full length at the end of the hallway. Well, I don't want to freak you out. I'm getting, <laughs> I'm getting a little goose pimply myself just reading about this. But I seen out of the corner of my eye and I was walking from the kitchen back to the vacuum cleaner and I seen a black mass. I don't know if you ever watched Ghost Hunters before or not or Taps, but it's a black like, I think he means ether figure, but it says either figure. Or like a blob of smoke. Like something or a black shadow type thing. But it was in front of the mirror and blocked the whole thing. And as I looked that way, poof, it went right into that room to the left. The one I stayed in all those years. And right then it hit me. Why my daughter would not stay in that room at night at all. This was the very first time I'd ever seen anything like that in broad daylight. I was never scared of seeing this at 14 and up at night. I took it as shadows or my eyes playing tricks on me in the dark. Well, I've always been able to see those things. Even when I was real little, I would hear things in my granddad's house, my house in Western Branch, and see shadows and things as a real little kid that scared me. And I pull my covers over my head. Some kids are more in tune to these things than others. Not sure why, but anyway, that was the first time. The second was a couple of weeks later, something I was vacuuming and out of the right corner of my eye. This time though, it came out of my mom's, well niece's at the time, the right room to across the hall, passing by the mirror again. <clears throat> Sorry. <laughs> but this time I seen it real good and it came from right to the left room, from the right to the left room. That one I felt a little uneasy by, and it scared me a little to tell you the truth. And by, and by the way, both times I told you this, the hair stood up on my arms and I got goose pimples. Well, I wanted to set up a camera down the hallway for a few days, if not more overnight and all day, just see if I could capture anything, but I couldn't get my sister to let me use her camera. So that was one of the reasons I was writing. One, to tell you all these things, hoping you may have had some of these experiences or someone there has and asking if you believe in stuff like that and to set up a camcorder in that hallway facing the back rooms all the times as a kid and when i woke my whole family up and made them all go outside in the cold they don't remember it none of them 
and I don't know how because all of them were mad at me for waking them up. Well, this one is the big one, and to this day it will sound crazy, and even I think so too, but I can't explain it, nor will I. <clears throat> Sorry. Nor will I ever be able to, nor do my family members remember this either, except for my sister. And then he says her name. <laughs> And she said she remembers it bits and pieces, but it's as if it's like clouded memories. But she remembers, well, I will tell you, it was the winter storm we had in 89 or 90. It was a blizzard we had back then. And I think we got like four or five feet of snow or something like that. But our back door was a snow drift all the way up near the top of the storm door's glass. You couldn't open that door if you tried from inside or out, unless you dug it open. Oh, and, and really quick, he did, once again, added a little extra note up here at the very top that says, this is 100% a true story, no lying or any of that. It's true and not made up. So he's very adamant, This all this stuff did happen to him. <sighs> okay, so, well, get this. I woke up, I woke up facing the door in the snow on that back porch my left hand on the rail and the snow melted as if my hand was really hot and I melted the snow perfectly around my hand in a square basically. The wood was dry under my hand. There was a cigarette hanging from my right fingers. I was like I think 15 or 16 but anyway the ash was hanging off bent like and I stood there with it for the whole sig. I had no shoes on, no shirt on and just my jean shorts I wore to bed. A perfect sized circle melted around my feet and legs and wood under my feet was dry like I had been standing there for hours. Like I said, I even tried to pull on the back door handle, but the storm door wouldn't budge. No feet prints coming to the back porch from either side of the house. The only ones were the ones when I ran off the back porch to the front on the left side of the house as if you were facing the back door. That left of the house where the gate is. Now, I tried to wake everyone, but no one would get up or listen to me. They just said I was dreaming. Well, the next morning, they all came out. My sister, brother-in-law, mom, brother, all of us. We were all out there, and I think my oldest sister was there, too. Anyway, my brother-in-law was at, uh, making fun of me and joking on me, saying I staged it all, and I walked backwards through that deep snow. I said I didn't, and to go ahead and try yourself to walk through it backwards. We all tried it, but we kept falling backwards on our backs once we made one trek backwards. Then, as you try to pull your foot out, we would fall backwards. So we well, so we, well, my brother-in-law and me, almost got into a fight over this. Well, I almost fought him over it because he didn't know how I did it. And he kept saying I was lying and I hated being called a liar to this day I do. I get real upset when someone calls me a liar, especially when I'm being serious about something. Well, my sister is the only one who remembers that day, and it's so weird, too, because we all got into a heated debate over how all this took place. And because of my brother-in-law, everyone was doubting it to be true, but I still couldn't prove it not to be because everyone tried everything to debunk it, but couldn't. So what I... I I didn't quite understand this story the first time I read through it because, you know, that edible. But I think what he was saying is he woke up. He Like, there was this big snowstorm, and he woke up on the back porch. Uh, it's like a little deck, which, again, I'll try to show photos. He woke up on the back porch with the snow melted around his hand and his feet as if he were on fire and dried out the wood at his hand and his feet. And there were no footsteps leading to him getting on the back porch and he couldn't have come out the back door because the snow was so high against the back door that you know it would have been obvious if someone had opened it from the inside so i think that's what he's saying <laughs> and that um you know and there were footsteps of him leaving because he ran a back round to the front door because he couldn't get in through the back door because of all that snow so he ran around to the front door to get in the house and woke everyone up because he was freaked out about it and they were all like you're lying there's no way you faked this sort of thing so I, I think that's what that story is now that I, I'm reading it with a clear mind. But <laughs> that's kind of crazy too. But that, that could be sleepwalking. But he had a cigarette too. But that's not unusual. A sleepwalker will do something like light a cigarette. Like I, I, 
I had a boyfriend who was a sleepwalker who he, he woke up, he would wake up in his car. He would wake up in other rooms. You know, it's, it was wild. Like there were a couple of times where I'd wake up and he'd just be like standing at the edge of the bed, just doing that creepy, like they show in the horror movies thing, just sort of shaking back and forth. Then he'd turn around and walk into his closet and just stand there for like 10 minutes. And then eventually he'd just come back to bed. It is the weirdest thing. But anyway, that's what it sounds like. It sounds like he might've been sleepwalking, although obviously not there. So I can't attest to only one set of footsteps and everything else he's saying. But anyway, back to the story. We, we only have like one page left here. And because of my brother-in-law, everyone was doubting it to be true and still couldn't prove it not to be because everyone tried everything to debunk it, but couldn't. You ask them today about it and they swear it never happened or took place or they want to, but can't place their finger on it. It's really weird, huh? Well, I just want you to know that none of this is made up. And although I hope you have not had any bad experiences in the house or around it, but if you have, please tell me about it. I would really like to know. And if you have felt little stuff and can't put your finger on it, it may be more to it than you think. And also, if you or someone you know has a camera, you can set up for a few days and nights to point down that hallway. You may catch something on it. And also at the top of this letter, he actually leaves a note, which includes, I, I'm like, I'm not sure why he would do this, but it says, I talked to my sister, gives her full name all the time. And if you have questions about this letter, tell her by phone and then gives her phone number. And then also gives out his mother's full name and phone number to random strangers that are now living in this house. <laughs> I mean, I guess there's not a lot of threat there, but still it just seems weird to do that. But anyway, continuing on because we're almost done. Back to uh, uh, setting up the camera for a few days and nights to point down that hallway. You may catch something on it. I feel you will. Unless somehow this is a spirit that has been attached to our family and just moved from one place to the next, which I've heard can happen. It is something I did want to say to you in person so I could get your reaction to all of this. Plus, when you see someone eye to eye, you can see when someone is being sincere in which I am and in no way am trying to scare you. I just want to know if it is still going on there. If you don't want to hear from me ever again, that's fine too. I just wanted to put it out there in hopes that it may help out if things are a little weird or not. Please at least tell me if what you, if what I told you has anything to do with it, or if you just don't feel anything I've told you about that's about, that's okay too. I just hope that none of this has upset you. And I wrote to you, especially from a prison. I've just had some time on my hands and I'm bored. So I wanted to see if you had some of the same things going on that you can't explain. Thank you for reading what I wrote. And I do hope things are good there in that house. And I did ride by apparently somewhere previous to uh, between 2016 when Brian took this over and 2019 when he wrote this letter from jail, he drove by the house <laughs> once or twice. And I did ride by because I live in Port. So does my mom still live? And you've done a nice job with the house, by the way, and yard. Sincerely, this gentleman's name. <laughs> so that's the letter. And the funny thing about that last part about how he liked what Bryant did with the front of the house and the yard, Bryant at that point, he's like, I'd made zero changes. <laughs> I'm not sure. I am, yeah, he might not have made any more changes even <laughs> since then. But he's like, I've made zero changes. So it's nice that he likes what I didn't do or I did with the yard. But anyway. So, so that was, that was that letter. That was crazy, right? That's like seven full pages front and back <laughs> and, and, and some crazy stories in there. Some, wow, definitely guys, definitely tell me what you thought about all of this down in the comments below. Um, what I think about this, like Brian, like I said, has been here since 2016. He said he's never experienced anything supernatural feeling, never felt uncomfortable or anything like that. And I've been, you know, staying here um yeah i only just moved in around june but previous to that i there were plenty of times i've spent the night here and i've never felt uneasy um i was actually shocked at how quickly the cats adapted uh like and and me too like when we actually moved in i feel like we all adapted really quick 
I'm in the garage right now, which like I said, we um, renovated and I've given a tour before and I absolutely love it out here. I don't feel any negative feelings out here at all. I, I did when I um, first had everything set up, I did do a smudge. <laughs> I did take my, uh, my, my sage and do a little smudge. <laughs> But I've never felt, like even previous to that, I've never felt any negative feelings. I love it out here. I actually feel very welcome on this property. Um, so so neither Bryant or I have experienced any of those things. But it's still, I still, I believe that this gentleman believes what he's saying. I do believe that. I do believe that he believes what he's saying. I just feel that, like I mentioned earlier, there may have been some abuse um, he's also, you know, been in, in jail for, for drugs multiple times. I believe we, we looked him up and he's actually not getting out of jail to, till uh, 2029 for whatever his latest infractions were. Um, so I don't, I guess we don't have to worry about him driving by anytime soon, <laughs> but still. So, so I feel like maybe his memories, he's created some false memories to cover up for more traumatic things that may have happened to him. Um, I feel maybe a family member was abusive because his daughter also didn't want to stay in that room. So I'm, I'm, I have like this fear that maybe, because he never mentions his father, which I also thought was odd. His father never comes up and, and I don't know whether his father just wasn't in the picture or maybe his father was abusive <laughs> and that's why he just sort of written him out. But again, I don't know. I don't, this is all speculation. I have nothing to go off of. I know nothing about, um, you know, the previous family that lived here. It's possible the father just wasn't part of the family. You know, he left or something like that. So, but yeah, so that was, that was wild though. Like, like when, when Brian had mentioned it before in the past, I didn't really think anything of it. I was just like, oh, that's, that's a quirky story. When I read the letter, wow. I mean, just, oh my goodness. I feel so bad for this guy. Um, I'm not sh so sure about, you know, his giving out his family's contact information. I feel like that's, that was maybe something. Hopefully he asked their permission before doing that. Cause I can't even imagine being his mother or sister. And, and if, if it were like a different situation, a different family moved in, or, you know, we had had weird experiences or something where they get a phone call from a complete stranger. Oh, hi, uh, who are the people who moved into your old house? And, and your, your son said to give you a call to talk about these ghosts and whatnot. Like, I just, hopefully he got their permission first, but <laughs> it's just, just wild. The whole thing is just wild, right? Oh my goodness. And, and I, I won't lie, you know, like things like that get into your psyche. I had no, no second thoughts before, but now every now and then <laughs> I'll hear weird noises and I'll, I'll get a little creeped out. <laughs> and, and like I said, the cats adapted really well, but at the same time, they do spend a lot of time in that back room because that was the cat room. That's where I initially put them. And they love it back there. They're always back there, like especially Jasmine. Jasmine hangs out back there a lot. But they do spend a lot of time in that room just meowing. <laughs> Maybe they're talking to someone. Like, I'll call out. Because, you know, I'll be in the other room. I'll be like, I'm right here, guys. And then they'll be quiet for a while. <laughs> it's, it's really weird. But, you know, that could also just be cats. I, I feel like they did that at the old house, too. <laughs> But, but yeah, I just, it just, yeah, it, it makes, it makes those weird noises houses make a little creepier now, knowing that those types of experiences have happened. But yeah, I just wanted to share that with you guys, because I just thought that was, I don't know what to make of it. I really don't. But let me know, again, let me know what you think about all of this down in the comments below. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching. If you did enjoy this, please give it a thumbs up. And if you didn't enjoy it, of course, you can give me a thumbs down and please tell me all about it also in the comments below. And please subscribe to the channel. And I hope everyone is just staying happy, healthy, and safe in this incredibly crazy world we're living in. And I will talk to you all soon. Bye-bye.